Well, I think that so, transitions us nicely to performative experiences, because we've talked about this a little bit, but I figured we'd actually talk to about it again in front of people, because you definitely made that term up, performative experience, I think. Well, I, 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 I hadn't heard it anywhere else, so I think you made it up, right? I actually got in a fight with a girl at a party the other day who's like a grad student who says the word performative is, uh, it's like a psychological term and it's usually used negatively. Like you're, you, you're like when you're discussing something or debating something and you start like, uh, kind of putting on an act or like making a point in, in kind of like an act then you're doing it in a performative way, which is actually a negative thing. But anyway, that aside. Okay, that, so that's interesting. So maybe the name changes, but I think it's no, fine. No, it's not. I, no, I, I don't think it's think fine. Nobody ever has heard it, though. Like, and I, and yeah. there's a book called Ex Performative Experience Design that's written in like the 80s or something, but it's like, and it's about installation design. Um, it's just super unknown and like just this one woman who wrote this book, but it's like. So you didn't make it up. I mean, I didn't know about that until I started using it. <laughs> so you made it up and then you found someone else also made it up. But what is yeah. it? What is performative experiences? Tell, please tell the people performative Well, experience. I mean, I, and no offense to any kind of installation designers, but like to me. I'll be offended my, on their behalf. <laughs> on my, in my perspective, like there's a certain threshold of uh, passive installation design like when you go to an art gallery and you're looking at stuff it's a very passive experience you can get lost in it and you can have your own like creative like uh experience with a piece of art um but when it comes to new media and like interactive art um a lot of it is like basically just showing off the effect and what i used to call just like the hand wavy kind of installations um and like, I've always been drawn to theater. I mean, the VPX actually came out of a TV show we used to do that was live on TV, just a full of freaks in a green screen studio at, live every Sunday at the public access station in Minneapolis. And everyone would just like freak out and go nuts. And I'd have like all this hardware and gear and mixing all these video channels. And like- The show all was hilarious. I, I've seen a couple episodes. Yeah, it's, it's pretty nuts. But anyway, that show, inspired this whole thing and but, but but the whole point i'm trying to make is that um and that kind of is reflective of my like theater attraction to sort of like uh just getting weird but the, but the moral of that whole story is that we would do this show and the show is not that entertaining to watch but when you go home after you made the show uh, have a few beers with the cast and watch the show and look at people around you and see them watching themselves in costume, doing weird shit with a bunch of video effects and see the reactions that you're getting there. That's the magic. And that's the performative nature of their experience. They got to like, actually you pulled something out of them that they wanted to come out. Like, you know, Dungeons and Dragons is kind of a performative experience. Um, but also like, you know, when you know like music installations where you're encouraged to actually play or like they mix different people's like inputs together those are performative experiences mm -hmm. and basically i'm just trying to do the solution for for uh you know video booths it's a big part of it comes out of the passion passionate hate for the word photo booth mm -hmm. because it boxes me in and it boxes my whole business model into like a dumb thing that people have in their head of something super old and super basic that's always been around so it's like it's hard to kind of break that mold and that's kind of why i really clung on to that word it's like performative experiential tech is kind of what we're doing here i guess and in specifics your vpx has a director i think you mentioned that earlier yeah but could you explain the director role a little bit and and why you think that's important because i i as far as i know you won't send out vpx without a director no well we just did our first automated one i kind of am against automated uh experiences uh or that's, photo that's my bread and butter bro automated experiences oh photo booths i'm kind of against automated photo booths because it's like the guy who I mean, I'm usually the guy holding the camera, taking a picture for our photo product, but mm -hmm. like, 
that role is so important to get good content. It's like without it, you're kind of screwed. And there's like a profiling that goes into it. And especially when you're dealing with every kind of demographic um, and you like understanding the demographic is really important to getting good content. Um, and so we do like to man our experiences. Um, I'm usually the one I'm excited for the day when I get to train that into somebody, <laughs> but like, uh, it's also really a skill set that is kind of a unique one. It's not technical in any way. It's more, I mean, it is in some ways. It's like when you, if, if you've ever been in the, if you've ever been in a music video, like in a music video mm -hmm. and had a really good director and you're like doing some crazy shit. I mean, a big, you, you, you've, you've had the benefit of someone being like, oh yeah, but do it like this. And then you know that you're looking better. You know that whatever you're doing, like whatever it is, posturing, and we spent a lot of time diving into the psychology of different kinds of uh, directive cues to get people to, uh, you know, and a lot of it's emulation. Everyone wants to kind of emulate their rap stars and emulate different people, which is helpful because then you can use that to help people get loose and actually feel more expressive and unique. I mean, some people are born with it and they just come ready to go, but you also need to be able to adapt to all kinds of dem demographics. Which and is Justin's... Sorry, Justin's asking, does the producer direct from behind the screen or next to the performer? They're like with the performer, right? In in that VPX, uh, the director is uh, next to, it's like he's in the box with them. He has a cockpit screen, so he can do like, let's redo that take, um, or that was great, and let's move on to the next cue. Each one of these worlds have like up to six cues. And then they get stitched together in the edit. Um, so you can like retake different cues and do micro trims and micro edits on each recording. Um, the next version is going to be way different in, in that flow. We've kind of learned a lesson there, but uh, yeah, they, we, they're right there with you. And when we were in Warsaw, that was like the most important thing. <laughs> I mean, these people knew how to party, but like there was a language barrier which is fine because uh, you don't really need to talk to people to, to tell them like, okay, get ready. You know, you just got to be really physical and really interactive with them and get them really excited. Cause once they're excited, they, you know, go nuts and get weird and have fun. Well, I think that's the interesting thing with the, your approach, which whether it falls in the performative category, performative plus person, but when a lot of people would come to me, and, and it's probably the same for a lot of people. And they'll say, hey, we want to put this booth. It's going to be for an event and it's going to run for six or eight hours. My assumption is there's no real knowledgeable human being operating this thing. Like maybe there's like a branded that just somebody in a T-shirt to make sure yeah. it punches yeah. the screens. Yeah. But I never come to that thought of like, oh, maybe we should like put a person that can help people interact and, and use this thing. And then our default reaction is like, what kind of instructions can we put on the screen to like, yeah, but no, that's not the person. If you took this, if you took the perspective of a uh, video production and put it to our world, you know, you'd need a stylist. You'd need mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, somebody to help them get ready, you know, somebody to help all these different little nooks and crannies of the, ex the whole experience needs to be like perfectly smoothed out. I mean, like any, even a tiny little music video has like a 10, 15 person crew. And it's like that kind of attention to detail. I'm, I basically am trying to mix those two word, worlds. And our, our competitors come from the video production world. And like, you know, they shoot the fashion videos, they shoot all that kind of shit. And we can do that. But I think our angle, and ultimately when everything's said and done, is going to be like right in the middle where we're like pertaining a lot to, the freaks and the weirdos, but also ready to make a fashion video. And like, you just, you know, you have a really nice, simple environment where you can like style, get, you have a mirror, you have like, you're ready to get on camera and maybe a hype person. And that can be a brand ambassador that you pick from like a, you know, modeling agency. Cause you just, you just need to make sure that they're fun and they well, can like hype them up and then get ready to get on camera. But I think that's what makes, at least for me, because maybe a lot of people, when they see the content in the reel, they're like, oh, Hal probably cherry picked the best contents 
from you know trained actors in the booth but that's not really the case like anyone who enters the booth any content i've ever seen from the booth has always been really fun really high quality doesn't look like the user is just kind of like you know to your point waving their arms or like messing around with a connector or leap like it really looks like everyone gets engaged in the booth and i think for me a lot of that comes from the interesting idea of how important for you it is to to have that person there to have that performative notion really reinforced as opposed to because i don't think to your point i agree i don't think vpx without the director would be as fun for people because they would go in you know still behind their mask hit a few buttons on the screen put in their info do their little selfie thing and come out but like you really get people like ha doing crazy stuff in the booth and like having the ball and being silly and i think that's something that we forget a lot in our experiences when we're designing them is like yo these are supposed to be fun and like it's when like, they're fun i mean you can like tell me what it's like sale. like when you, when you want to make a good sale and you're in a boardroom you know it's like you gotta crack jokes you gotta like make people comfortable there's a it's just the same thing you have to like you have to have a person there to be fun and weird and get people excited to use the product. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's this is a unique product. This is not, you know, like anything, you know, like a normal installation would be or an architectural thing or anything like that. But in in the events arena, I think having people as part of it is. I mean, you know, and maybe you costume them. Maybe you like. Make them have weird vo vocal effects and more of a theatrical thing, but still, there's like some sort of the, people are more comfortable when they're, you know, other humans. Hey, folks, thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning touch designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.